Hello again, everybody. Welcome to case study number 26. Here we're going to talk about right upper quadrant pain. And uh, you probably should have watched my uh, video on right lower quadrant pain because this is going to build a little bit on that. If you have not had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I thank all of you uh, who have already stepped up to donate to help offset the cost of these videos and everybody else for your consideration. Okay, we got a 51-year-old Native American woman presenting to the ED complaining of abdominal pain over the last 12 hours. She says that she often gets pain like this after she eats, but this time after eating breakfast, the pain started and did not go away. She says that the pain was initially intermittent but is now constant. She describes the pain as sharp and points to the right side of her abdomen. Other symptoms include nausea, but no vomiting. She works as a bank teller. She's monogamous with her husband, and they do not use birth control, as she had a total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy. Basically, all her female parts were taken out uh, 10 years ago for endometriosis. Family history is not contributory. She has no history of or she has a history of endometriosis as well as hypertension and type two diabetes. Medications include metformin and lisinopril. Vitals show an elevated blood pressure, elevated heart rate, and a temperature. And she's setting one hundred percent on nasal cannula. Okay, what are we going to uh, do for physical exam? So she's in the ED. We're going to keep our physical exam fairly targeted. Uh, so she's overweight and invisible pain. Uh, skin, she's got no jaundice or rashes, normal turgor, heart and lungs are normal. Abdomen shows inspiratory arrest on deep palpation of the right upper quadrant. What do we call that? Murphy's sign. Important you understand what that means and what it implicates. Uh, otherwise, everything's normal. Uh, liver is not palpated. And of course, you got a patient with abdominal complaints. You've got to do your rectal exam, and this rectal exam was normal. Okay, what are we going to consider on a differential? So, of course, we're going to consider acute cholecystitis anytime you have a positive Murphy sign. Really, anytime you've got a patient, particularly a woman, middle aged woman, coming in with right upper quadrant pain. Acute cholangitis, biliary colic, acute hepatitis. All of these are right upper quadrant considerations, pyelonephritis, reflux disease, and this one's important, right lower lobe pneumonia can sometimes cause a right upper quadrant abdominal pain. So our initial workup, okay, remember, we're treating a patient, not a disease, so you got to make sure you're, you're relieving her pain first. Um, so we're going to give morphine, but make sure you check allergies first. We're going to bolus her, and then we're going to give her something for her nausea. So that needs to be in your immediate orders while you're doing your diagnostic workup. We're going to get a CBC, BMP, because this is right upper quadrant pain. We're going to check her liver. We're going to get a chest x-ray. Not only would that look for the pneumonia, which is unlikely given she doesn't have pulmonary symptoms, but it can also look for free air. If she's got some kind of cholecystitis, there's a possibility that it may have ruptured. So a chest x-ray is good for that. You look under the diaphragm. If you did get an abdominal x-ray, make sure you get a lateral decubitus because it'll be easier to see the free air if there is indeed free air present. Amylase and lipase, anytime you're looking liver pathology, you got to check the pancreas, urinalysis, and most importantly, a right upper quadrant ultrasound. What do we see? Her CBC shows a high white count with predominant neutrophils. Liver function test shows an elevated ALP, indicating a possible biliary tract pathology. Chest x-ray, amylase, and lipase, your analysis are all unremarkable. The right upper quadrant ultrasound shows gallbladder wall thickening. Stones are visualized and a positive sonographic Murphy sign. This is what the gallbladder looks like um, in a patient like this. So what you see here is a stone. You see some thickening, which was measured right here. And then this kind of hazy stuff here, that's sludge. Um, so it's not uncommon when you have a cholecystitis. So the diagnosis here is acute cholecystitis, considering what we saw in ultrasound, as well as the clinical picture. 
Uh, what we need to do for orders is your typical surgical order. So we would give pre-op antibiotics, but we're forgoing that here, and I'll come back to why that is. She's going to be NPO. We're going to give her maintenance fluids, type and cross match, and PTPTT. Always do this when a patient is going to need surgery. You'll consult general surgery, and then in a patient with acute cholecystitis, you need to give them empiric antibiotics. So what we're going to be giving is ceftriaxone. There are other drugs you can give, um, but uh, ceftriaxone is, is an easy one. And then urgent laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So acute cholecystitis is, and I did not finish that apparently, uh, but it's a bacterial infection of the gallbladder typically as a result of a uh, gallstone that lodges in the cystic duct. Uh, the major risk factors are a history of gallstones and biliary colic, which this patient did indeed have a history of, and the gallstone risk factors are fair, white, fat, female, fertile, and 40. Okay, that's kind of a stereotype, but it does work. And, you know, the USMLE likes stereotypes. It presents as right upper quadrant pain, which may refer to the right shoulder. And in fact, a lot of biliary tract disorders can refer to the right shoulder. Um, the best initial step, remember, is to manage the pain and use IV morphine unless the patient has a contraindication. The best initial diagnostic test, and this is the initial diagnostic test, is a right upper quadrant ultrasound. It will confirm the diagnosis. However, the most accurate test is a HIDA scan, but we don't do those because they're expensive. We save those for if the diagnosis remains in doubt after the ultrasound. The management is laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Remember to do all your pre-surgical orders. We usually give pre-op antibiotics, but we don't need to do it in this case because we're already giving empiric antibiotics for the cholecystitis. So that will be fine. You do not need to give additional antibiotics. It doesn't help. Um, now we would do an emergent cholecystectomy, meaning the surgeon is gonna run down to the ER and wheel them into the OR. If there is peritonitis, so think of sepsis, guarding, rebound pain, or if there's emphysematous cholecystitis, which you would typically be able to appreciate on ultrasound. Now, uh, to interpret the uh, liver function test, it's important that you know how to do this. Um, so I put some, uh, some tips here. I'm not going to go over this, um, but you can stop, print this out, or whatever if you want. Again, this is something that I found uh, in an article, so you can stop and look at this if you want. Common differentials, cholangitis will have Charcot's triad. So this is an infection of the biliary tract of the, the ducts. Uh, and so this is a patient that will look like this, but they'll also have jaundice. Um, biliary colic is kind of like how she was before, where she did not have the fever, she did not have the white count. She would have this right upper quadrant pain that was postprandial, and it would come and go, and then it would go away. What she's got now is not going to go away. Acute hepatitis will have jaundice, flu-like symptoms, acolic stools, and the AST and ALT will be greatly elevated. High AST and ALT can be found in any of these things, but when it's really, really high, look for something uh, hepatocellular. Pyelonephritis will be flank, flank pain, CVA tenderness, and the urinalysis will be abnormal. Reflux disease tends to be epigastric pain that burns and ascends. And right lower lobe pneumonia, look for pulmonary symptoms. Uh, so as I said in a previous talk, you may have pain in right upper quadrant or periumbilical or left lower quadrant, but always look for the adjacent um, the, the adjacent quadrants um, because the pain is not perfectly localized. So to recap, cholecystitis is a bacterial infection of the gallbladder, usually due to blockage. The major risk factors are gallstones and biliary colic. After doing your physical exam, make sure that you treat the patient. We don't just treat diseases. 
Cholecystitis is confirmed by ultrasound. That's the best initial diagnostic test. The most accurate test is HIDA. If the sano is negative and you still, still suspect cholecystitis, go on to do the HIDA. If the sano is negative and the transaminases come back greatly elevated, then you need to consider hepatocellular injury, maybe get titers for hepatitis. Once cholecystitis is confirmed, then you'll do your surgical orders, uh, NPO, maintenance fluids, type and cross match, PTPTT, and uh, consult general surgery and put in the order for uh, a laparoscopic cholecystectomy.